Our gracious and loving Father in heaven, we are believing children bow in your presence again this Sabbath evening. Our hearts go out to you in praise and in thanksgiving. For you have been so good to us. We have seen your hand at work in delivering us from accidents and the highways and the byways. We have seen your hand at work, O oh Father, in providing food, clothing, and shelter. O oh God, we have seen your hand at work in healing our family members. We've seen your hand, O oh Father, at work in bringing men and women, boys and girls, nightly under this canvas cathedral. Amen. We know that it's not by might nor by power. We know it's not by intellect or intelligence. We know, O oh God, tonight that this work is a work that can only be accomplished through the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And we have seen the manifestation of that self-same power here nightly, even tonight. We recognize you, therefore, as the Almighty God, the giver, the sustainer of life, our Redeemer. O oh God, we proclaim this evening that you are God and that you stand all alone. And we give you our allegiance. We choose you afresh as our God even now. We ask for forgiveness of sins and cleansing through the blood of your Son, Christ Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that you would cleanse us through his blood. You would cover us with his righteousness, that you would accept us for his sake now. We ask that your Holy Spirit again would do what he has done, and even more than what he has done in times past. That he would be in this place, moving up and down the aisle, in and between the chairs tonight, bringing conviction and conversion, speaking to your people, O oh God, in the language that every person here can understand. That the Spirit would interpret and reinterpret your word into the minds of your people, in ways that only they can understand. And as the call goes out again this evening for your people whom you have brought to come to the altar, to stand up, O oh God, to declare to the devil, to declare to the unfallen worlds, to declare that they have chosen Jesus. That they have stepped out of the enemy's camp and they are now with Jesus and that they are going all the way with him even into the watery grave of baptism. Lord, your people whom you have brought here tonight, may they respond and run to the altar when the call goes out this evening. Amen. Those who have already decided, bring them forward. Those who are yet to decide, may they decide tonight to run to the altar, oh God, and settle it with Jesus. Amen. We wait, Father, believing. We wait, trusting. Do that which you alone can do, we pray and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A dream come true. There are many persons in our world who would not make major decisions except they receive a dream.
We live in a country in which having a dream could make a difference between poverty and riches. You know what I'm talking about, right? We see folk at certain places, at certain hours of the day. What hours do they gather? What hours? Come on, somebody, somebody must be following me and where I'm going. What hours do they gather by certain places? Right, the gather is about 10? Before 10, before? One before, before four, before six, right. I'm talking about persons who are involved in play way or pick two or whatever other names that are given. Very many of those persons are involved in that and they move based on dreams. And so whatever you dream, there is a number that can represent whatever you dream. Isn't that so? Yeah. Whatever you dream, there is some number inside there. And your dream represents some number inside there. So if you dream after having overeaten That some big macaroni running it down, then there's a number for that. What is that called? Big snake, right? <laughs> and what's the number for this big snake? I don't know, you tell me. 25 is the number for big snake. Don't be ashamed to say it doesn't mean that you're playing, it just means that you know. 25 big snake, right? And if you happen to dream a, a pregnant woman, and there's a number for that too, not so? What, 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 what's the number for that? Six. Number six, yes. <laughs> and so there are persons who inquire daily of persons, girl, wait. <laughs> not so? Because that's a big thing. As we get into the Bible, we recognize that there was a king in the Bible. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king of Babylon. And he had a dream. A dream that troubled him. This covers the entire chapter of chapter 2 of the book of Daniel and you have some 45 plus verses there. We don't have time to read all of them verse by verse but you take note of Daniel chapter 2. And, 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 and my brother on the multimedia can help me. I, uh, I think I, I need to go back and start at verse 1 and give perhaps just a few verses there so that those who are not so familiar would have a sense of what I'm speaking about. So I'm speaking about this king who had a dream that came true. A dream come true. This king who had a dream and could not firstly remember his dream and could not secondly obviously if he cannot remember the dream then obviously he would not be able to have an interpretation for the dream. Daniel chapter 2, we begin to read at verse 1. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, where his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Okay, let's go on to another verse. I'll tell you when we stop. Then the king what? Commanded to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king. 
And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my what? My spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the child into the king in Syria, O king, live forever, tell thy servants the dream, and he will do what? Show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the child, The thing is, go on from me, if he will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, he shall be what? Cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a downhill. We stop there. So the king, what was his name? What was his name? His name was the Nebuchadnezzar. He was the king of? He was the king of? Babylon. He was the king of Babylon. He had a dream. As a matter of fact, if we examine it closely, we perhaps might want to say that he had a nightmare. I said, if we examine it closely, we might want to say he had a nightmare in that the Bible said he was troubled. Okay? He was troubled. They have jumped up out of his sleep, scared. Troubled. And more so because the thing had gone from him. He just couldn't remember what it was. He, he knew it was important, but he just could not remember what it was. And so he calls for persons who had the reputation of being able uh, to interpret dreams. Magicians, astrologers, folks who studied the stars and the moon and so on. Those who followed horoscope daily called for them because they claimed they knew how to interpret dreams. They claimed they knew the future and could interpret the future. Perhaps he may have called palm readers who walk down the streets and, 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 and there are persons who are standing at certain points and they are, they are offering you looking to pull you aside that they might read your palm and tell you what your future would be like, etc, etc. Have you come to them? I come to them from time to time. They are out there. They are advertising on social media, on the newspaper, etc. That's all persons who claim to be able to tell your future. The king called them together and he expected them to be able firstly to tell him what his dream was and then to give him the interpretation. But the king had a problem because they were unable to do that. They were unable to tell him what his dream was and therefore they were unable to give him its interpretation. They said to the king that what you are asking is unreasonable. What you are asking is unreasonable, king. You are asking men to do something that men are unable to do. And the king got angry and issued a decree against them that they should surely be what? Put to death. The Bible tells us in that self same chapter Daniel 2 that God had young men in Babylon who were part of the leadership. They were numbered among these wise men. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were there. And therefore said that they were numbered among those wise men that decree to kill all also fell on their head. And when the thing came to Daniel, Daniel asked for time that he might consult the God of heaven. Amen. 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 Yes, he asked for time that he might consult the God of heaven. Let's read a little more about it. Let's pick up where we left off. We stopped at, at verse, what was it for? Verse 5, let's, let's, let's read a little more about it. Yes, 
Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were among those wise men. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the thing has gone from me. If he will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, he shall be what? Cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made up downhill. But if he show the dream, dream and interpretation thereof, he shall receive of me gifts. We will meet this evening and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servant the dream, and we shall show thee interpretation. The king answered and said, I know for certainty that he would gain the time because you see the thing is gone from the earth. You're playing for time. You're trying to buy time. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have what? Prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that he can show me the interpretation thereof. You are buying time. Tell me the dream. And once you can tell me the dream, I will be able to, I will have confidence in you and then I can accept your interpretation. They could not tell the king the dream. Daniel and his friends stepped in. They went before the Lord, brought the matter before God, and God revealed it to them. Amen? Amen. I said they went in before God, brought the matter before God, and God did what? He revealed it to them. And so we, we pick up now where Daniel, when we get now where Daniel from verse 31, Daniel now is speaking. He is relating that which God has revealed to him. Amen? Amen. Thou, O King Soros. So he is describing the king's dream. Follow it. Thou, O King Soros, and behold a great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was what? Terrible. This image's head was of? Of what? Fine gold. I need to hear you. Read with me. His breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thigh of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou Saw us till that what? A stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that was iron and clay, and break them in pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together. Are you with me? And what became like a shaft of a of the summer threshing floors, and the wind did what? Carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great, became what? A great mountain, and filled up whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before of the king. Amen? 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 Amen. I want to dim the lights down so that folk can see this. This screen is a little weak. The, the computer here. Let's dim the lights down. Folk can see us as we go to this continue the screen now and get some, some visuals of that image that Daniel had God revealed to him which the king saw some visuals of that image. Daniel said, this is what you saw. You saw an image. Its head was of pure gold. It's all right. You can do those on the, on, on, on the rustle here. I'll see on the screen. I'll follow so that folk can get a, you know, a better view of the richness of, 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 of what is being displayed there this evening. Let's get those lights quickly as we, as we move forward. You saw an image. Let's 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 look at the image. The head was of pure gold. The breast and 
arms of of what? Silver. The tie of what? Of brass. And legs of iron mixed with iron mixed with what? Iron mixed with clay. That was the image. The legs of iron rather and the toes of iron mixed with clay. The legs of iron and the toes of iron mixed with clay. So the head of gold, the breast and arms of silver, the waist in a tie of brass, the legs of iron and the toes iron mixed with clay. This was the vision that the king had. And Daniel is explaining that vision now to the king. Amen? Amen. He's explaining. And immediately we recognize that that head of gold represented the kingdom of Babylon. What kingdom we represented? The head of gold represented the kingdom of Babylon. In other words, God gave the Nebuchadnezzar a panoramic view of nations which will rule the world down through the corridors of time. Can I repeat that? God gave the Nebuchadnezzar a panoramic view of nations which will rule the world down through the corridors of time. God began with the very kingdom of Babylon. This, what we find in scripture, can be supported in the annals of European history. I repeat, this that we find in scripture can be supported in the annals of European history. There was a time when I used to tell folks, go and look for it in the Encyclopedia Britannica or the Encyclopedia Americana. But now I simply tell folks, Google it. For that's where we are, and that's all. As a matter of fact, even as I speak now, there are some of you with your smartphones who can even Google it now. So preachers have to be very careful what they say. Preachers got to ensure that they are giving that which is truth and factual. Because even while you preach, somebody could pull it up and say, preacher, that is not true. Are you with me? So Daniel, this is what Daniel saw. The head of gold represented the kingdom of Babylon and Babylon ruled the then known world from 605 BC, which is before Christ, to 539 BC. Before Christ, they subtracted the years, right? After Christ, they add the years. Am I correct? So the years have been subtracted. So 605 BC coming all the way down to 539 BC, the kingdom of Babylon ruled the then known world. That's what the head of gold represented. After that, the Bible tells us that the next kingdom that ruled was what? The kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. The kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. European history again tells us that the Medes and the Persians 
came and attacked Babylon. They diverted the river Euphrates, Cyrus under Cyrus the Great, diverted the river Euphrates and made their way into Babylon and overthrew the kingdom of Babylon and ruled from the year 539 BC until 331 BC. The kingdom there represented by silver, a weaker metal, a cheaper metal than gold. Are you with me? And therefore, the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians was not as glorious, was not as fantastic, was not as expansive as the kingdom of Babylon. In Babylon had what was considered to be one of the seven wonders and so on of the world. Babylon, you can also have there uh, his hanging garden. Media Persia was not as great as Babylon. But that was not all the Lucas saw. He saw another kingdom coming after Media Persia, represented by the tie of brass. Okay, my, my brothers, my operator, stay with me. You know how technology works. So let's move it for me like you. Okay, so we go back. We go back. Let me make sure if it, okay, it's back on. All right, wonderful. So after Media Persia came the kingdom of Greece. And who led the kingdom of Greece? A young man by the name of Alexander. He became known as Alexander the Great. He conquered the then known world in his early 20s. A young man of great prowess conquering the then known world, defeating Media Persia and establishing the kingdom of Greece and ruling their Greece as a nation again with brass as the metal representative and brass as a metal that was used in the kingdom from 331 to 168 BC this is what Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream and this is what Daniel was sharing with him and then he saw legs of iron. What did he see? Legs of what? Iron. Legs of iron. And that those legs of iron represent the kingdom of Rome. Rome was terrible. Rome was dreadful. Rome was merciless. And Rome ruled, as a matter of fact, Rome ruled the longest of all the kingdoms. Rome ruled for over 500 years. Rome ruled first as pagan Rome and then as papal Rome. I repeat, Rome ruled for over 500 years, the longest as pagan Rome and then as papal Rome. Rome. That's why the Roman influence in our world, even tonight, is so strong. Because Rome ruled the longest from 168 right on into the midst of the fourth century. Rome ruled. Ruled those legs of iron. But the book of Isaiah did not only see that, he saw more, amen? Yes. He saw more. He 
he saw coming after Rome, he saw something happening. He saw something taking place. What did we can also see? Let me pull my, my hard copy and let's ensure that we are moving on with the will of God this evening. Amen? Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. I said the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He is a defeated foe. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm reading from Daniel chapter 2. Oh, perhaps let me just go back quickly and begin to read from Daniel 31. Thou saw, thou king saw us, and behold, a great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent and stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image head was of fine gold, his breast of and his arms of silver, his belly and his thigh of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou swear still that what? A stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them in what? And break them in what? And break them in and so and so the Bible is saying that after those legs of iron something will happen after those legs of iron then, then Daniel saw the image with ten toes and those ten toes they were made of what? iron mixed with miry clay I said iron mixed with what? mixed with miry clay Clay. We move on quickly and on to verse 36 it says, This is a dream, and we will tell the interpreter thereof uh, before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Babylon, Media Persia, then Greece. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces. And what? And bruise Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, and then Rome. Verse 41. And where, whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron the kingdom shall be divided but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Uh, Daniel is saying to the king that something is going to happen. He's saying that a stone will be cut out from the mountains without hands. Amen. A stone will be cut out from the mountains without hand. And that stone, that stone will not hit the image on its head. That stone will not hit the image on its breast and arms. That stone will not hit the image on its tie. That stone will not hit the image on its legs. But that stone will hit the image on its toes. Daniel said that those toes, they represent ten kingdoms. He is saying that just as clay and iron cannot cleave together to make any lasting bond, that after Rome, no single kingdom will come together and be able to rule 
the entire world. Daniel saw the barbarian hordes move into Rome. He saw these barbarian tribes move into Rome and he saw them break up Rome. He saw them demolish Rome. He saw Rome divided into ten kingdoms, I said. He saw Rome divided into ten kingdoms represented by those ten toes. He saw some kingdoms strong. He saw some kingdoms weak. And Daniel said that men will come forward and they will try to pull these kingdoms together. Men will come forward and they will intermarry. And history tells us in Europe there's a time of uh, these kingdoms when men tried to pull them together through intermarriages. They tell us that they would intermarry, that indeed close relatives would marry in an effort to bring these kingdoms together. But the word of God said that they shall not cleave together. Just as 
God said this came and took over after media pleasure just as God said Rome came and took over after Greece just as God said those ten toes they were divided into ten kingdoms of Europe and some of them are still along uh, even this evening uh, Germany and England and France and the others uh, are still along tonight just as God said it as God said it to Daniel as God told it, uh, told it to Daniel and Daniel told it to the king in every minutest detail I repeat in every minutest detail that dream has come to pass in every minutest detail the only thing now the only thing now that is left to come to pass with that dream is for the fulfillment of that final part of the dream where that stone that is cut out without hands will come and respect the image I'm here to let you know tonight that that stone represents Jesus that stone represents Jesus that stone represents Jesus Daniel was saying to the king that in the time of the ten toes even tonight in our time I say even tonight in our time Daniel said that Jesus will burst the clouds of heaven he said that Jesus will burst the clouds of heaven and that he would come that he might set up a kingdom kingdom, hallelujah, and that kingdom shall be a kingdom that shall last, it shall stand forever, when Jesus comes, he shall set up an everlasting kingdom, when Jesus comes, he shall set up a permanent kingdom, when Jesus comes, there will be no more any elections, when Jesus comes, there will be no more any military coup, when Jesus comes and say he will set up his everlasting kingdom a kingdom wherein dwelleth righteousness that stone is about to fall I say that stone is about to fall my people tonight that stone is about to fall
coming for his people. That's why he sent me out here to preach. I said, that's why he sent me out here to preach. He sent me out here to preach to get his people ready. I said, he sent me out here to preach to get his people ready. Ah, some of his, his people, some of his people, they have gone back. Some of his people tonight have backslidden. Some of his people have gone into all kinds of strange doctrines and strange organizations and strange groups. Jesus Christ has sent me here to call his people back. He's saying, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out from those offshoots. Whatever they call them, whatever names they are, come out from those offshoots. Come, 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 come back home. Come back home. Come back into his remnant church. Come back into his last day church. Come back and begin to do what he wants you to do and join his people in proclaiming this everlasting gospel to the world. Yeah. Well, I'm speaking to backsliders now. I'm speaking to backslidden members of the church tonight. This gospel of the kingdom got to be preached in all the world for our witness. And uh, then the end shall come. I tell folks one of my strongest arguments and one of the strongest reasons why I cannot be a part of any offshoot organization is because no offshoot in a corner under a house in any back of yard can carry this everlasting gospel to all the world, to every creature, to every kindred, to every nation, to every people. No offshoot can accomplish that. You've got to be a part of God's worldwide church. Jesus 
will come. And so it is in our time that Jesus will come. Oh God, strengthen your people tonight. Open their eyes and their understanding tonight. And bring them to the altar, Lord. Determined to go all the way with Jesus. Even into the watery grave of baptism. Holy Ghost, do your work now and strengthen your people as they come, we ask. In Jesus' name. God is calling you now. Come. Come. If you are back then, come. Come out. Come to it. God is saying, come. Whoever you are, come. Whoever you are, come. Come, this is my call tonight for baptism for the morning. If you have signed up for baptism in the morning, come. If you are here, come. Walk, yeah, come. Those who signed up already, come. Those of you who need to make that decision for the first time, I'm saying, come. God is calling you, come. You just leave where you are and come and settle with Jesus. Saying, I will follow thee by. Could you sing that song for us, please? You come saying, I will follow thee, my Savior. Jesus is saying, Come. Jesus is calling his people, he's saying, Come.
that will father all of your people who want to be saved in this season shall be saved. We give you praise, we give you thanks, we thank you for those who are still in the valley of decision. Keep speaking to them, keep bringing them here, bring them to fellowship with us in the morning, bring them back again on Sunday night. Bless and keep them in every way we pray. Bless us as your members, keep us faithful. May, may we call up one another and encourage one another to come out and to support what you, you are doing in this place of God. We pray that you will be pleased with us and that you will bless us too. Because we'll say, if you ask, we thank you. In Jesus' name.